Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So we are back, we're gonna do another haunted paranormal story. So let's just get into it. The story is called A Family's Terror. A family living in a haunted house or being visited by a demon isn't a new concept anymore. You can find shows on television almost every night of the week portraying either paranormal investigation teams looking for evidence or a family getting more than they bargained for when they moved into a new house. But when this story took place, it was harder to find investigative teams and most people thought a person was crazy if they claimed to hear disembodied voices. A book supposedly based on true events was released in 1977, The Amityville Horror, written by Jay Anderson. Oh, Anson. Jay Anson. I, you guys know I can't talk. Was made into a film in 1979. It told the story of George and Kathy Lutz, who bought a house and were forced to flee due to evil forces that threatened to possess them. What some of you might not remember is that Rockford had a case much like the Lutz families. It took place in 1982 to a family on Rockford's east side. Vaughn and Sherry moved into what they hoped would be their dream home with their five children. Those hopes were dashed almost a year later when the family fled their home in terror. At first, they tried to ignore what they thought was a ghost, but that ended after the wife, Sherry, was temporarily possessed by a demon during a seance. Okay, if you think your house is fucking haunted, right? The worst possible thing that you can do is a seance. Let's just pull up the Ouija board. Let's fucking have a seance. You guys are dumb. You don't fuck with shit. Okay. I, even if you don't believe, don't fucking do it. Just don't do it. Whether you believe it or not, don't fuck with the Ouija boards. Don't do a seance. Because you're either going to become a fucking true believer or you're going to fucking fuck up something. I don't know. Their claims started shortly after they moved into their home in 1981. This is before I even was born. The events seemed to appear in a pattern of every three weeks. They heard footsteps walking up the stairs from the basement, after which someone or something would attempt to open the basement door. The television in the living room would turn on by itself in the middle of the night, even after the family unplugged it. A ceramic figurine that sat on the organ split straight down the middle as Sherry walked through the living room. Household items such as pots, pans, plates, and silverware would disappear only to reappear in another location after three weeks. So I had this problem with silverware too, but it's not a ghost. You know what mine is? My seven-year-old daughter. Um, Chad went outside last summer and was mowing and found a shit ton of fucking spoons out there. So it might not have been a demon. If you have a seven-year-old daughter, it was probably that. Just saying. And I'm a believer of paranormal shit, but come on, guys. That one? Mm -mm. My daughter steals my fucking silverware. <laughs> Anyways. The missing items were always in sets of three. Unexplained foul odors would circulate from the basement. Some of the family members who would stay the night would be awakened at night by the violent shaking of their beds. People who study demons and demonic possessions report similar experiences. They theorize that these occurrences happening in series of three is an attempt to mock the Holy Trinity. The incidents grew more frightening until one day when Sherry was visiting with a friend and both of the women heard horrible growling sounds coming from the basement. The growls continued as they heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs. Sherry quickly threw herself in front of the door to block it until her friend could wedge a chair under the doorknob. Sherry would later say that someone or something was pushing the door from the other side. Her whole side that was pushed against the door turned extremely cold. Terrified, Sherry and her friend both fled to a neighbor's home. The neighbor insisted on phoning the police despite Sherry's reluctance. The police filed a report that became public and the newspapers reported on the family's experiences. The police found no explanation for the noises. There was an article that mentioned that when the police report was filed and the officer was startled by the last digits for the case number, the number ended in 666. 
Sherry and Vaughn gained the assistance of a local amateur ghost hunter. He offered to conduct a seance with the couple to determine what exactly was in the home. It was during the seance that Sherry seemed to become possessed. Her face contorted and she began to emit a loud growling noise. The men became very frightened for her safety and shook her until she came back to her senses. Sherry had little memory of what had happened during the seance, but she found several deep scratches on her body. The ghost hunter told the family that this was no ordinary ghost and that he believed their house contained a demon. The family contacted a minister from a local Pentecostal church who agreed to help. The minister agreed to conduct an exorcism, but insisted that Sherry leave with the children during the ritual. The minister was joined by his assistant, the ghost hunter, and Vaughn. They all stated later in an article in the Rockford Register Star from March 22, 1982, that they immediately sensed something in the basement. The temperature was colder wherever the presence appeared to be. The men were in the basement for an hour and a half reciting prayers and using anointing oil to cleanse the home. They continued until they felt the presence leave. The minister came back again to conduct a final prayer service for the family. Though everyone agreed that the presence was gone and the house felt lighter and safer, the family was afraid to remain in the home. They left the house and moved to an undisclosed location. Some people were skeptical about the family's experience while others tormented the family by knocking on their door and requesting to see the demon house. But unlike the Lutz family and the Amityville horror tale, this family was reluctant to go public with the story. One can only hope that their new home brought a feeling of safety for the family. The Rockford Register Star won a third place award in the local features category for the article that Dave Daly wrote about the incident, titled The Demon Within. No other claims were found about the family or the location. And that is the end of that story, guys. So you hear this shit everywhere you go. It doesn't matter. Like, any kind of story you hear, there's going to be another story in some other random spot, random location, right? Like, kind of like the whole car theory. Like, you park on a hill that's going up, uh, there's a presence that'll push the car up to get you off the railroad tracks or what have you, whatever. Okay, that's not just to this location, it isn't just Rockford. Just like this story, the, the Lutz family, we all know about the Amityville house. I did a video on the Amityville house. Actually, it's one of my most popular videos and I'm still questioning that because I was still very new to this shit. But something about the Amityville house draws people, man. Um, honestly, I, I'm on the fence. The fact that you don't know where the house is, so I can't even go look at it. Um, there's not a whole lot of information and I don't know if it's because it happened back in the eighties. So it's before, you know, social media and all that shit. But, like, there's just so many questions. Like, we don't fucking know shit. I, I want to know where this house is. <laughs> it's going to drive me insane. But, anyways, on that note, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this shit. Um, do you guys think it was just a fucking hoax? If it was, if it was just a spiel, then how come they never came forward? How come I can't find out where this fucking house is? So... Anyways, what's your guys' comments? You know what mine are. Mine are always the same. <laughs> they don't change. Um, anyways, if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.